Yeah, I do need your homework from yesterday turned in. All right, on page 137, I want you to look at the very, very bottom. By the way, in that preview box on page 136, those are, there's some ways of factoring that if you don't remember how to do like perfect squares or difference of two squares or sum and difference of cubes, those kinds of things, um, those are on page 136 in that preview box. So if you need that to help you factor, use it. Okay? All right. On page 137. You're looking at the bottom of the page. You're not really doing real trig proofs yet. Because real trig proofs, do I have to work the entire thing on the left side? No, I can work a little on the left, I can work a little on the right, I can do a little on both and make them match, right? These are not going to be real trig proofs. I want you to look at number one. What they want us to do for number one is basically just take one minus sign and one plus sign, turn that into cosine squared. I want you to do it as a trick proof, but for these, basically, we're only allowed to work on the left side. They're just telling us what to end with. Okay? When you see one minus sign, one plus sign, what immediately jumps into your head? It's already factored What is it, though, factored out? Difference of two squares, isn't it? Like, when you see one minus, one plus, difference of two squares. There's so much with difference of two squares. Like, that should be a trigger. Hey, difference of two squares. What would, what would I get if I foiled that back together? Careful. What would come what, what would come first? One minus sine squared. Yes? Now go to your toolbox. What's your main Pythagorean identity? What's the main Pythagorean identity? Sine squared plus cosine squared equals 1. This identity, you need to know this identity in multiple, multiple forms. What is this identity? Can I get 1 minus sine squared out of this identity? Wouldn't it be cosine squared equals 1 minus sine squared? Yes? So what's the only thing left to do with this proof? Make the substitution. You're done. Woo! Let's try number two. Well, number two is basically exactly the same. Let's try number five. It says we've got sine squared minus 25. That's supposed to equal, or over, Sine squared plus 10 sine plus 25. And that is supposed to end up as sine minus 5, sine plus 5. Should I be thinking substitutions here? Why not? It's all sine already, right? So all I'm thinking is simplification. Factor. What's my numerator factor into? Sine minus 5, sine plus 5. Yes? What's my denominator factor into? Sine, no, sine plus 5 and sine plus 5. And then? There you go. And I'm left with sine minus 5 over sine plus 5. Woo! How are we doing, Mr. Fowler? Thank you. I appreciate that. That's All right. I will uh, keep it on the down low. All right. We good with these? Kind of? 
Turn the page. Now, over the next few days, well, tomorrow we're pretty much just going to do some practice problems of these. I'm going to go through the homework, and then we're going to start reviewing for the exam. To start the next semester, I'm going to give you a whole bunch of tips. When you do proofs, try this, try this, try this. Can I give you a step-by-step -step how to? No, because every proof is different. One of those tips, let's just say, and we're not going to do this proof, I'm just making stuff up in the top of my head. Let's say I give you something really crazy over here, and it says sine squared plus cosine plus tangent over 1 minus cosecant plus secant, right? We've got all kinds of junk over here. Equals sine squared plus 2 sine minus 1 over sine squared. Let's say that's the proof I have to do, which is not going to work. I just made it up. Is there anything that jumps out at you? Because there's something immediately that jumps out at me. I look at this side and I go, holy cow, that's a lot of weird junk. And I look at this side and I see something. Something jumping at me. It's all sine. If I saw something like that, what do you think my first instinct would be over here? Get everything in terms of sine. As fast as I can. I would say, well, that sine, I'm going to leave it alone. That cosine squared, now I could have changed that sine squared plus cosine squared into a 1. I get that. That's probably a good move. But that cosine squared, I know that that is 1 minus sine squared. I know that because that's my identity. Tangent, well, that's sine over cosine. Well, I got a cosine I'm going to have to deal with, but at least I'm getting closer, right? Over. And I'm going to leave that 1 and, whoop, that cosecant, that's going to be 1 over sine, right? I, am I trying to match it right now? No. no. What's the only thing I'm trying to do? Get it into terms of sine. Once I get it to sine, then I'll worry about trying to match it. Does that make sense? This happens a lot. Now, I want you to look at number 17. Is there anything that you're trying to match that to? No. There's no matching. It is, we don't have a, something to match it to. Our only goal is exactly that. If I saw this side was a whole bunch of messy stuff, but it was all in terms of sign. Stop doing that. If it was all in terms of sign, That's my goal. I'm not trying to match it to anything. I'm just simply saying, can I get this in terms of sine? What can I substitute tangent for? That gets me closer to sine at least. Look at your toolbox. What? Sine over cosine. Okay. Now I still have that cosine. Hopefully we can deal with that. But at least it gets me somewhat in the realm, right? How about secant? What is secant? It's 1 over cosine. It's at least not secant anymore. So at least it's not a reciprocal identity. All right, multiply across. What do you get? Sine over cosine squared. Ooh. Can I now change cosine squared? What is cosine squared? So I got sine over 1 minus sine squared. I'm done, because now I have it all in terms of sine. I'm not necessarily trying to get it into one specific thing. I'm just trying to turn it all into one trig function. Does that make sense? So for that section, that's all you're trying to do is turn it into terms of sine. For number 21, what's the only goal? 
I want, do I care if it's this long? No. All I care is the only trig function in there is cosine. Are you allowed to have some other numbers? Yeah. I just don't want to see a sine. I don't want to see a tangent. I don't want to see anything else, just cosine. I'm going to give you guys time in class tomorrow, and we're going to do a bunch of this. But I do want you guys to try the evens tonight. Now, again, tomorrow in class, basically all I'm going to do is just answer questions. And I want you guys to rapid fire, ask questions, ask questions, ask questions. Okay?